So the symptoms are that when you try and start the bike, um, turn on the ignition, the um, fuel pump fires up, you hear that going, kind of, uh, but then when you press the start button it just clicks and all the electrics go out which means it's shorting through, uh, through the motor. Now I tested the battery um, and I tested uh, the starter solenoid and they were both fine. Um, and there was so there was charge on the battery, so the charging system, the regular regulator rectifier, and the generator or alternator um, were both fine. But um, when I uh, when I looked at the motor and tried to just short it, uh, you'll see in the video um, it didn't start. So if you're having an issue where when you press the start button it just kills all the electrics and sets your clock back to midnight or whatever time it sets it to, um, then um, then the chances are it's short in somewhere and for me it was the uh, the starter motor because it wasn't turning what was happening was the coils were just uh, conducting straight through uh, so it was just drawing all the current um, and it wasn't turning it, any of it into motion so it was just killing off everything so have a look at the video okay um, quick update on the starter problem. The battery is on 12.6, it was on 12.8, but um, I've just been trying to start it and that's just dropped a bit of the bit, bit of the voltage out of the battery, um, so it's emptied it a bit. So the battery's good. The uh, starter solenoid, I'll just show you. That's this thing here, you'll hear it click, and that's what's running out of the battery every time I do that. That's clicking fine. Um, but what I've done is I've taken the starter motor out. Here's the starter motor. And um, and I've stripped it apart. Bits of glue are coming out here, which isn't good. Don't know what that is. A bit of grit in there. No, it can't be. Um, yeah, it's probably just a bit of my drive. But um, but yeah. So it would. So the starter motor wasn't turning freely by hand. Um, and we tried tapping it and stuff when we were on the trails, and that didn't work. So uh, what I've done is um, I've had a look inside. Um, the bearings look good. The um, this bearing's fine, so that's spinning fine. If I put that in there, that's that's spinning absolutely fine, but it wasn't spinning inside there. And that, when I had a look inside, this is what I found. These magnets that have come unglued, two of them. Uh, this one's the other one. Um, so two of these magnets have come unglued. So what I've got to do now is research whether I can just um, find the right glue to glue them back on. Um, I'm thinking a bit of aerodite if... Uh, because I think that'd probably be the best of some sort of epoxy resin, but um, the, they, whatever they've used, obviously ain't that good. And I've got to get them precisely positioned as well. Um, and then hopefully I'll get it all back together. Now, I've cleaned up my contacts a bit there. Um, and uh, so that'll just help it to work a bit better. I'm just gonna put this back together and see what happens. It should, in theory, spin now if they're in the right place. Yeah, nope, because the magnets are getting, yeah, look, if you look here, although it'll spin in one direction kind of all right, if, when I do it in the other direction, the magnets are all getting a bit, uh, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try again. Can you see the magnets are all shifting around? And that, or two of them are anyway, that ain't no good. I'm guessing one came loose and then it knocked the next one loose. Um, I'll clean up my brushes inside here, they all seem fine. But they, I'll just give them a bit of a clean while I'm there. No idea how I'm going to get this back in because every time that I let go of those, they ping back open. Oops, spring. Don't want to lose that. Right, I'll put that down. Okay, so it's fixable, I reckon. I'm going to give it a go with Araldite. I'll get on the internet and see if there's something better, but I'll give it a go with Araldite. Um, and um, if that doesn't work, I'll have to buy a new, a new starter motor. Joy, I think they're about 100 quid, which I'd prefer not to spend. All right, we out. So it turns out that I actually um, was, would have been able to fix this on the trail. Um, I've done a bit of research and it turns out that this JB weld, this stuff, is much better than Aerodite because it will go up to about um, 260 instead of just about 60 degrees centigrade that Aerodite would go up to. So much better solution than Aerodite. Um, and I had that with me on the trail. So I'm going to use this bioethanol from my Tranger um, to clean everything up. I'm going to move this bit of... Um, stuff away because I don't want to get any wire walls stuck on any of the magnets. Um, so I'm just going to 
clean up inside there and then try and try and place the magnets. I don't want to get the magnets turned around or mixed up, so I'm going to do them one at a time. Um, take this one out first. Yeah, I mean, this is just basically pure alcohol. I think they put something in it to make it taste horrible. Uh, it smells like pure alcohol. Um, so it probably, uh, but it probably has something in it to stop you drinking it, I don't know. I don't know why you'd want to. Um, but people do all sorts of uh, dull things, don't they? Right. Let me try and get all this cleaned up. Obviously the difference on the trail would have been that instead of kitchen roll I'd have used a bit of loo roll. I'd have used another container for the alcohol, probably one of my cookie pots or something, which isn't ideal. Whoops, shouldn't have done that. As you can see there's a bit of broken, uh, hopefully you can see that bit of broken magnet, or, or broken glue or something. I think that's broken magnet actually. That's stuck in there, yeah, if you look at that it's actually come off. Um, let's clean this up as well. Got little bits of metal stuck to it. But yeah, at least the coil and everything seems fine. Alright, so that seems pretty clean now. Nothing else is really coming off onto the kitchen roll. So I tested the battery. And I tested the solenoid. And then I tried to just... Um, connect this battery up directly to the, uh, sorry this starter motor up directly to the battery and it didn't go all right it's nicely coated I suppose this is uh, one thing I didn't have while I was away as a cotton bud, but I guess not that important. Right, I'll leave that to set, and then do the other one. I'll leave it to set a bit, then when it's kind of in place I'll do the other one. Right, so another one all coated up. Make sure everything's at the same height. They all look pretty evenly spaced. Right, I think we're all good. Um, obviously on the trail, it would have taken me a lot longer because uh, that first lot of glue is not dried yet. I'd have just had to wait for the first lot of glue to set reasonably hard before uh, taking off the mini mole grips because I didn't have the big set of mole grips with me. But it would have been doable on the trail. It would have probably just taken a whole morning or afternoon or something. Right, I'm going to leave that to set overnight. Then hopefully when I put it all back together, we'll be able to start again. We'll see. Bye for now. Okay, so it's been sitting overnight and hopefully these are solid. I mean, the glue's, the glue's all set hard. JB Weld. So let's take these off. <laughs> Sticking on by magnetism. Right. Just looking in there. Everything looks even and well spaced out. We'll just get a ruler in there and just see the end of the ruler. Yep, that looks square. So they're all at the right height. The gap in between them. Pretty consistent. Almost nothing in, in terms of the size of the gap in between them. Let's pick 
take off these bits of gritty stuff. Right, now the moment of truth to see if this goes in and spins. <laughs> it does stick to the sides, right? Let's see. I'll try and get it in without it sticking. Oh, God. I can hear it scraping a bit, but I think that's just because the bearing's not on on the other end, so at least it's moving fairly freely. Yeah, it's sticking to whichever magnet. There should be a middle position where it doesn't scrape. Right, this is going to be a bit tricksy, trying to get... Just make sure there's no bits of metal in there. <laughs> trying to get all these brushes on. I think it's going to be a bit of faffing around. Look, springs and brushes and all sorts. Right, time to think. All right, hopefully this will work, a bit of string. A bit of string. Again, something that I carry is a bit of string, because you never know when a bit of string is going to come in handy. Ah, it didn't work. Like I say, at Royal Enfield, they probably have some sort of fancy jig for this. But I don't, so... Bit of string it is. First one's escaping, second one's escaping. This isn't good. Why are they all escaping? Let's see if we can tighten it up a bit. Oh, first one's out. <laughs> right, start again. If you've got any suggestions for a better way to do this, I mean, I haven't Googled it, there's probably something really obvious that I don't know with cable ties or something, but if you've got any suggestions for an easy way to do it, and let me know in the comments down below. I wrap it around there once, then it's not going to come loose. So they're all holding out the way, which is nice. Just the last one. Pop the spring in. Alright, so all four of them are holding out the way. Now hopefully this will just go in there now. There we go, seems to be on. A little bit of stiffness there, but it doesn't sound like it's scraping. So in case you're having a go at doing this, um, that mark there needs to line up roughly with that mark there, although it's slightly out, a bit worrying, and line up with the uh, that machine put bit there. Which is obviously where the kind of boss thing is that screws into. Right, I'm going to put this back on the bike. So I've set this thing, let it set overnight. So it's meant to have, I think, 16 to 24 hours. It's now 3 o'clock, so I've had about 20 hours. So it's in the middle of that space of time. I mean, it sets after 4 to 6 hours, but it's not fully cured until... Um, 16 to 24 I think it was, 16 or something. But anyway, I reckon 20, it'll be cured enough. It's not a cold day or anything. Obviously I'm gonna give the whole bike a bit of a clean up once, uh, once I've got things working. I've still got to do the clutch, but I'm pleased to know that so far everything that's gone wrong with it is stuff that if I was in the Namibian desert or somewhere, I'd be able to, given a bit of time, just sort it out. Because I'm carrying all the right kit with me. So that's fastened back on, just cover it over. Right, so the battery voltage is 12.6, which should be enough for it to start. I mean, it's a bit lower than it should be, but that's, or than it has been, but that's because I've been trying to test things with the battery and then obviously not running the bike to recharge it. So I'm just gonna shove some of this stuff back where it belongs. Right, so, <laughs> I promise you, I haven't done a, a trial go at this. This is the first attempt, so we'll see what happens. Turn it on. It's in neutral. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, yes, it works.
and again. Fixed! <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs>